Hey everyone, it's Esther. Some of you guys have dealt with or are currently dealing with evil family members, fake friends, toxic coworkers, or even romantic partners who have done a lot to you. And it was to the extent where they try to really hinder your progress and stop your destiny. You know, there's a term for this called monitoring spirits. And I know how that can be. It's very disheartening when you thought that people you could trust betray your confidence and end up being snakes. And, you know, when you are going through this or even after you go through this, sometimes it can take a while to recover because of the trauma of the betrayal, you know, and it can be really hard to move forward at times. And what I think is really common for people to do is become focus on the past betrayals that have happened to them. And what is really common is that people can then feel like, okay, you know, these people try to stop my destiny. And, you know, I think that what happens is a lot of people take this spiritual warfare that they encountered from people they trusted, people who are close to them, they take that as their mission, their assignment, when actually they have bigger fish to fry. Now, don't get me wrong. I think that there are some people who are called to the area, the expertise of subjects like narcissistic abuse and interpersonal dynamics where people are educating others about these kind of things that go on. And I think there is a uh, value in talking about bringing light to these subjects if you're someone who is a spiritual messenger because this is part of life, right? And something that many of us go through. But I think where it becomes a problem is that when someone is not called to this area and they make that their main focus when actually they have a much broader um, assignment, when they have a a very different uh, assignment that is laid out for them. And so that's why I want to bring this message of you have bigger fish to fry. Because I think that when we experience spiritual warfare from people around us, you know, we can feel like that is the extent of the warfare. But, you know, depending on your assignment, it's not just going to be people around you, you know, when you the more you elevate, it's like you're going to have a lot of different kind of people try to come against you, uh, oppose you. And especially if you are serving the kingdom of God, you're going to deal with all kinds of people. And so I don't want you to be unaware. I don't want you to be so focused on your enemies or what some people call karmics, that you don't look at the bigger picture, where you know, you're going to have to deal with additional warfare, warfare from different angles, the higher up you go, the more you advance in your assignment. And so first of all, it's important to know, okay, is this your main area of assignment? Is this where your anointing is? And is it something that, you know, free from offense, you still want to do it? Or are you drawn to these areas where you're talking about, you know, enemies all the time because it is a way to nurture those feelings of offense? So it's really important to know first and foremost, like if you are drawn to uh, frequently talking about your enemies, is this is there a greater purpose? Is there is this your assignment or is this something that you are doing because you have not released from the feeling of offense. And this is not an easy subject to talk about because a lot of people will interpret my message as, you know, oh, you know, but these people did do others wrong and we should hold them accountable and, you know, we shouldn't have to uh, let people walk all over us. I totally agree. I think that, you know, we have to have boundaries with people and forgiveness doesn't necessarily mean reconciliation. But forgiveness is simply about letting go of the offense. And if you don't let go of the offense, this is going to actually hinder your destiny in the end. And especially if it is not your area of, of anointing, of gifting, and you are focused on this, then I think that is a problem. You know, like I think that 
why uh, there is a greater frequency of people who talk about their enemies in the spiritual community and Christian community as well is I think these circles are smaller, you know, whereas in the world, some of the domains are larger, they are more used to success. Whereas places like the spiritual community, for instance, it's a, it's a smaller pond. And so I think that a lot of times people in the spiritual community, uh, they there's this big fish in a little pond syndrome. And so when they feel like that has been threatened, it's like they feel like they have to constantly defend their posts. When in actuality, when God has called you to an area, you can assume that responsibility and you don't have to always defend your position, your post. I think the best thing to do rather than always talk about your enemies, if you're not called to that area and be an educator and empower is you have to stay very, very humble. I think that the misconception is to think that if we constantly talk about our enemies, then we're going to have greater power over them. But that doesn't work if you have the, a spirit of offense, because that actually puts you in violation of spiritual law. And again, it's not about, you know, letting people walk all over you, because you can have your, your boundaries, you can have your closed doors, it doesn't mean, okay, yeah, come on in. No, that's not what it means. But it means that you are focused on the greater mission at hand. Some of you guys have been given a vision a while ago, or maybe God has revealed it to you recently. And it is beyond this spiritual community. It could be possibly in government and legislation in a cause that you are extremely passionate about. And those kind of sectors are can be very dangerous and it requires a lot of reliance on the Holy Spirit. You have to be extremely precise. And there is monitoring in those realms as well. Um, and so you have to be well equipped. But if you are kind of messy and you're always talking about your enemies and you're harboring, nurturing this spirit of offense, that is very risky because you don't have the grace of God to protect you in the situations. Now, I do believe in spiritual protection. I do think that many of us, even worldly people, they can have a guardian angels of their own. But I think that with spiritual people, there are higher standards for us. And so when you have the hand of God on you, and you're constantly nurturing the offense, that is going to be more risky than sometimes for a worldly person holding on to a spirit of offense. Okay. And so it's really important to be, it's going to sound counterproductive, counterproductive and counterintuitive. But you have to really, really cultivate humility. And that is actually going to be your greatest protection when it comes to your purpose is nurturing humility, being prayerful, and being close to the Holy Spirit. 100,000 times more than talking about your enemies and how God is going to make them, you know, your footstool and you know, touch not my anointed, humility is going to far outweigh those kind of claims, these kind of messages, because then your spirit is aligned with the Holy Spirit. And you have that grace that is going to cover you. And one thing I'm, I have learned is that you can never have enough grace. I think that, um, you know, especially if you're working for the kingdom of God, like you need all the grace that you can get. And so if you are, you know, nurturing pride oftentimes, and you're not humbling yourself enough, then it's very dangerous. And I think that, you know, it's so unfortunate how there is this big fish in a little pond syndrome. And so I think that because a person, they do feel threatened about other people um, trying to take away their destiny. I think they are more boisterous and obnoxious when you don't have to do all that. And I understand a lot of people hearing this message, some of them are going to be offended because they 
They like to have their spiritual ego stroke. They like people to say, yeah, you know, <laughs> how could dare they come off across a, across a, a chosen one, an anointed vessel of God. And okay, in the right context, I understand those sayings. I understand what people mean, but I'm talking about people who say things like that in a really haughty tone. And, you know, they have this legend in their own minds kind of mentality. And I hate to say it, but most people who, who talk about chosen ones and empath, super empath or whatever you want to call it, most of them unfortunately have a a pretty large spiritual ego and they don't realize that feeding that spiritual ego it's not really helping them it's actually going to harm their destiny in the end because they're not humbling themselves and allowing themselves to have more grace from God and so it's not to say that calamity will befall upon them but I think that they will not advance as far as they can um, as if they do humble themselves to the spirit of God. And so, you know, you really have to stay close to God in your assignment at all times, like whether you're on the low or you're on the up and up, or you are established, like every sector, every level, you have to nurture that spirit of humility. And it's hard, right? Because I think that a lot of the times when we go through this warfare, it is unfair, but that doesn't mean that we get on our moral high horse and talk down on our haters. And one thing that has helped me is understanding how much grace ha God has given me in my life. And it's not to cancel out, minimize, downplay or excuse the behavior of toxic, envious haters, but it is understanding how much God, grace God has afforded me and, you know, uh, how he has given me mercy. It has al allowed me to um, not be on this moral high horse. And I think that it is different how we are and some of these people who go out of their way to do some diabolical, disgusting things, right? But it, it's, you have to separate yourself from the, from themselves and understand that regardless, this is about your personal relationship with God. And so even though you may never do things like that, like black magic and just, just disgusting, extreme form of witchcraft that is sometimes people do some very creepy and dark things, even though you would never do that. Um, what I'm trying to get at is still, I think that when we go through these trials, our spirit is being tested and God is trying to see, okay, uh, are you going to become bitter from these things and turn into a witch yourself because you hold on to unforgiveness, which crystallizes into bitterness, and then it causes one to become essentially like a witch? Or are you going to lean on me, rely on me, and allow yourself to have the Spirit of God in you to move in your purpose and your path with humility. Now that's hard. That's so hard because we have been done done dirty. We have been wronged, right? But again, it's not to say like, okay, well, uh, what you have done is the same as these people, but rather you have to see it as you are your, your character is being tested by these trials. And if you can move forward leaning on God and releasing the offense, then you continue to advance in your path. But if you ca continually, constantly talk about your enemies and, and talk down on them uh, in this morally superior tone, and uh, you get in a, a negative space of pride, then I think we actually sabotage ourselves. And you know, we focus on the small things rather than the big things. And we, our territory is much smaller because we're so focused on trying to defend our small little posts here rather than on giving our 
battle to God and letting God fight for us. So it is really important to stay close to God, be humble. And it's not about being a doormat, not standing up for yourself. You can definitely stand up for yourself, but you have to choose your battles wisely as well. And so uh, this message is not for everyone, but I hope that it reached who it was meant to. Anyway, take care and God bless you.